So we've been hearing a lot about how bees are, are often exposed to multiple pesticides. So they're exposed to multiple pesticides when they forage on, on multiple crops. They're also e exposed to multiple pesticides when they're taking these, this nectar and pollen back to their hives and, and, uh, and, the, and the different pesticides accumulate in the, in the, it's in the wax, it's in the honey, it's in the pollen. Uh, and so we really don't, we're, we're just starting to understand how these different pesticides might be, might be interacting with each other. And it's a, real, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real concern as of late that some of these pesticides might be specifically interacting very strongly to impact bee health. Uh, some of these synergistic interactions include a particular type of fungicide called a sterile biosynthesis inhibiting fungicide, SBI fungicide, uh, which have been shown to, particularly, to interact particularly strongly with neonicotinoids and pyrethroid insecticides. So that's a really interesting question. So, because in the past we didn't think fungicides really play a very big role in bee health. Uh, they should be killing fungi, not 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 insects. Uh, but now we're seeing that they might not be quite as benign as we once thought. So my research uh, delved a little bit into this into this question of how fungicides and insecticides are interacting uh, to impact bee health. To do this project, we performed laboratory studies using Bombus and Patients, the eastern, common eastern bumblebee. There's been quite a bit of research on how multiple pesticides are impacting honeybees, at least the bulk of the research that is out there has been on, has been on honeybee species. Yet there are hundreds of other wild bee species that are, that are out there and we're, that are very important for crop pollination. So we're very interested in how, how multiple pesticide exposure impacts those species as well. Uh, in New York alone, there are over 400 species of wild bees, for example. Uh, so that's why we chose to work with the bumblebee as our, as our model species. And we dosed them with uh, four different treatments. So the first treatment was just a control treatment, acetone. The second one was using just a fungicide. The third one was using just an insecticide. And the fourth one was using a combination of insecticide and fungicide. And again, we're really interested in, in does the, the combination of having that fungicide in addition to the insecticide, is that more harmful to the bees than just the insecticide or the fungicide alone? Uh, so for the setup, we, we dosed them with small drops on the back of their, of their thorax and abdomen, and we followed their mortality through time. So we looked after 24 hours, 48 hours, and 72 hours. So we did find, in fact, that some fungicides do interact with some insecticides, whereas in other cases, they don't interact synergistically. So if you look at this figure, uh, it's three panels, A, B, and C. Uh, this is, these correspond to the time period when we took the data. So 24 hours, 48 hours, and 72 hours. That's when we monitored the mortality of the bees. And on the, on the uh, x-axis are the different pesticide combinations. First the insecticide and then the fungicide. So you can see bifenthrin and difenaconosol in the first set of bars, for example. And on the y-axis is the, is the proportion mortality. So one would be 100% mortality, zero, zero percent mortality. Then if you look at each pesticide combination, you'll see a white bar and a gray bar in parallel. The white bar is the expected mortality if we didn't see a synergistic interaction. And the gray bar is our observed mortality. So what you see is that in some cases, there is a big difference between the white bar and the gray bar. For instance, in this first graph, after 24 hours bifen with bifenthrin and microbutanol, there's a, uh, a, a large, uh, the gray bar is much larger than the white bar, meaning that our observed mortality was much higher than what we actually expected. And the, the number on the top of the, uh, of the bars represents the, the ratio of those two bars. So the, the, the observed mortality was 11 times greater than the expected mortality. And those asterisks simply mean that that interaction was a statistically significant synergy. So you can see that across all three panels, those three time points, the bifenthrin and microbutanol treatment was always synergistic, always highly synergistic. So that is a particular combination that seemed uh, that particularly dangerous to bees. Uh, and there were a few other synergies. One was thiamethoxam and microbutanol just at 24 hours. And another was bifenthrin and difenaconosol after 48 and 72 hours. 
But you can also see that several of these interactions were not significant as well. So it's really critical that we continue to look at the role of this multiple pesticide exposure on bee health. There's so many unknowns, so many different potential interactions between different pesticides that bees are being exposed to. And we're seeing that some of these interactions can be quite synergistic on, on bee mortality. Uh, we're seeing particularly that, that fungicides are not as benign as we once thought. So if you're a grower, you're wondering what, what chemicals might be most synergistic, which ones you might want to avoid. We have some great guides available at the DICE Lab. You can download that from the website and it shows exactly what, which chemicals have been shown to be synergistic with each other on impacting bee, bee, uh, bee health. If you're a beekeeper, it's very important that you stay in constant communication with the growers around you. So you know what they're spraying and maybe that they can um, learn more about these, these synergisms as well. And as always, feel free to reach out to Dice Lab if you have any questions. Thanks much.